I'm Julie Burkholz from Ghent University, and I'm joined here today with my colleague. My name is Sylvia Tinkova uh, from the Charles University in Prague. We are one of the partners in the CLS Infra, and we were responsible for the deliverable from the work package 8, deliverable 8.1. CLS stands for Computational Literary Studies Infrastructure. This is a four-year partnership uh, between many partners across the EU to build a shared resource of high-quality data, tools, and knowledge to aid different approaches or new approaches to studying literature in the digital age. Specifically, what we're reporting on today is work that comes from Working Package 8. Working Package 8 is one of the nine working packages within the infrastructure project. And within this um, working package, we're working to optimize the availability of fundamental natural language processing NLP tools. So not only think about the workflow, but also think about how users can implement them. Are they user friendly? How to make them available to users? How to connect them with available data? How to use the results and analysis that's done within these NLP tools? Um, and working on ensuring that this tool chain is connected uh, and providing um, the services and tools around natural language processing. Our work for Deliverable 8.1 was a joint effort from many partners within the project and led by Sylvie from Charles University. This Deliverable itself is primarily a technical report. Uh, it is the first step towards the final output of the CLS Infra project. And that is a tool chain for standardized CLS workflows. It is a curated list of state-of-the-art tools uh, and the important thing about this list is, however biased it can be, that uh, the focus is on multilingual tools, state-of-the-art tools, uh, tools that are well-documented, or tools that are specific to uh, literary studies, such as uh, poetry uh, processing. The list has gathered tools that could complete a more or less standardized workflow for most text mining uh, studies or text mining uh, tasks within literary studies. So this deliverable is the summary of some research on what tools should be considered uh, for a workflow that basically consists of uh, these steps. Uh, build a corpus, annotate a corpus, uh, either uh, automatically or manually, then search corpus and extract the search matches from it and evaluate the quality of your annotation against a gold standard. Um, maybe I should elaborate more on this workflow so that you can see the issues that we have been tackling uh, and uh, <clears throat> overcoming those in the final tool chain is going to be that substantial added value that I would not claim to be already present in this deliverable, but we are working towards it. So uh, corpora or literary texts uh, typically occur in complex structured formats of previous assembled or gathered together annotations, uh, mostly within, within the XML TEI format. Uh, the XML TEI tags are particularly good to indicate, for instance, that some text belongs to a chapter header or that it is in a special font. Uh, in drama pieces, you often have the stage instructions encoded uh, apart from, uh, from, from the dialogues, from the lines of the, uh, of the characters. Uh, it is uh, a, the, the markup that is associated with uh, digital editions. It is powerful, uh, but to extract uh, unstructured information from the plain text, uh, for instance, from all lines spoken by a given character of the piece, you need linguistic markup, uh, which in its turn can also end up in the XML TI format, but that's not the point. Uh, it's not the point to create even more convoluted formats of, of uh, combined annotations, but the point is really to do some research on it, and whether you have it separate 
separate or 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 together doesn't play a role so much. The uh, the key point is searchability and and export options that suit to your uh, to your research question. So the the linguistic markup consists of information about each word. It's uh, the the basic markup is part of parts of speech. Uh, the basic dictionary form of each word that's called lemma. Uh, possibly you also want to have uh, the syntactic relations between the words that usually means uh, a word and its syntactic relation to one word that governs it uh, within the sentence. Also, uh, we have, uh, and that's typically required from uh, by, by uh, literary scholars, named entity recognition, which again has to deal with the fact that named entities very often consist of what, more than one word. Uh, and with this markup, you can automatically extract information not only about what locations, what, what people were there, but also where or where from someone moved uh, with which adjectives a character has typically been associated when someone else was referring to that person and, and many more advanced things that are of interest to literary scholars. These examples were targeting the content, but in the same way, you can operationalize some features of style. For instance, look for interjections as emotion markers, or you can compare two texts based on how much action then they contain. Uh, which you can proxy by verbs or verbal nouns and adjectives. Let me also add a detail about, about the linguistic annotation scheme we have decided for. Sure. It's the universal dependencies scheme and the UD pipe parser. And we have, uh, we have selected that because uh, it's not only because it is multilingual, uh, there exist um, parser models for, for more than 100 languages, not just major languages already, but also that it is that, that the scheme itself, the, the universal dependencies for morphology and syntax, doesn't pertain to a specific linguistic theory. Uh, the, these theories can be very uh, off-putting for literary scholars. So we really welcome the, the idea of having um, a clear, um, non-assuming, uh, very pragmatic scheme for information extraction or primarily trimmed to information extraction that would work across languages and make uh, corpora uh, searchable without, without learning a new tax set for, for, for each new language or, or new uh, linguistic school or, or whatever. Uh, what I want to, what I really want to stress is that it is very easy to uh, prepare your own training data in case you find out that uh, the parser uh, underperforms for, for your language or your uh, domain, and uh, that you are very welcome to uh, contribute to the universal dependencies uh, GitHub pages. Uh, if you want to do so, then just check out the universaldependencies.org and you will find out about the details. So the report, which is publicly available, is a report on these basic natural language processing NLP tools. Uh, as Sylvie has described, this is not meant to be an extensive list of every single NLP tool that a literary scholar can use, but rather a curated list of tools um, that can be implemented by literary scholars. The document is structured and first a general introduction about how to understand natural lang language processing, um, and then a list of abbreviations, of course, so that you can understand what OCR, part of speech, definitions as well, um, of what different types of analysis are, what tagging means, tagger means, um, and tag, for example, what text modeling means. So it serves as a resource, um, one 
and core resource um, that was developed by literary scholars and NLP scholars together on the CLS project to identify what some of these um, challenges are for literary scholars in understanding and implementing NLP tools. Um, as you move further on in the document, you can see a list then of these tools, and this is then semi-structured information where you can find the technical details of uh, versions, the operating systems, the license that you need, the distribution, um, as well as the user interface, so what you need technically to support these different tools. And um, there's also a short description of what um, models or analysis can be done, as well as import and output formats that are needed in order to implement these tools. So you'll find as well an example uh, when applicable of this tool used in research um, so that you can also see how can I implement it? How can this um, be implemented in my work and, uh, and literally done in practice? We hope that it serves as a resource for scholars um, a trusted resource that was developed by the community um, that's also um, seeking to support them uh, in implementing these tools in practice. My university encourages scholars to, to take our transnational access fellowships just for building and annotating such corpora. So far, we have created uh, a South American Spanish corpus of fiction texts which would uh, increase the performance of the, of the parser on uh, dialogues uh, featuring more second person uh, verbs and, and, and vocatives and stuff. Uh, then we've built a corpus of uh, medieval Irish poetry with syntactic annotations. And, and of course, these undertakings are not uh, very interesting or uh, scientifically ground breaking per se, but they will contribute to the whole community so that you can use the, these models trained on, on, on uh, this data and uh, answer your really interesting research questions with, with the tools that, that are available. This is just the first step in the work um, that we're doing within CLS, specifically within Working Package 8. Uh, this is our first report of applicable tools. Um, and more importantly, this um, serves as a structure, a skeleton for us to think about which and how we want to provide the tools and services to the community. Um, in the next step of the project, we are working on developing and providing access to a number of tools, specifically tools related to named entity recognition in English, Dutch, German, French, and Czech, for sure, as well as some other languages, um, as well as relational extraction and sentiment analysis in English, French, Dutch, and German. Um, so look out for those at the end of the project, which is in two years time. And last thing I would like to add for my part was when we were discussing which, uh, which tools you would integrate, then of course, these were primarily tools we either uh, are responsible for ourselves within the projects or uh, that, that we have experience with. Uh, so we might have missed very, very interesting and, and very mature tools as well, admit, admittedly. But uh, at, with, with the heap of tools we've gathered, we are pretty sure that we can make them interoperable so that we can offer you at the end of the project that we will deliver some glue scripts between them so that you don't have to program this yourselves.